okay, we could go back to the unit circle approach to figure out the rest of the sum and difference identities. But maybe a better approach would be to use some facts that we know already. Remember how it works for complements of angles, that the cosine of an angle matches the sine of the complement of the angle, so pi over 2 minus theta. And the sine of an angle is the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. So let's do the case of the sine of a sum of two angles, say alpha plus beta. First thing is to write that as the cosine of the complement, so pi over 2 minus alpha plus beta. The reason I'm doing that is I know how to do the cosine of a combination of angles. And let's do this combination as pi over 2 minus alpha minus beta. Now it's the cosine of two angles in here, and it's their difference. So that formula that we have works. Out comes the cosine of the first times the cosine of the second. That's a plus or minus for cosine of the difference. It's plus, isn't it? Plus the sine of the first, sine of pi over 2 minus alpha times the sine of beta. Now we've got values for those from those complementary angle formulas again. Cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha is the same thing as sine of alpha. So we've got sine of alpha, cosine beta from the first for the first term. And for the second term, sine of the complement of an angle is the cosine of the angle, cosine alpha, sine beta. So there's a formula that works for the sine of a sum in terms of combination of sines and cosines. And all it takes is the even-odd identities to go to the last of the four formulas that the sine of alpha minus beta is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta.